This is the Kelly Kettle Trekker model. I've had this in my possession now for almost a year. I've used it extensively and now I think I'm finally ready to give you some opinions on it. If you're interested, keep watching. Okay, so as I mentioned, I've had this kettle in my possession for almost a year. It was sent to me by the good people at Kelly Kettle, and I want to start off by thanking them for their extreme patience in waiting for me to get this video prepared and put out. But I think that extra time that I spent with the kettle gave me some really good insights into it. Because, you know, when you first look at this kettle, you're probably thinking, it's way too big. It's way too heavy. I would never carry that. And, you know, I know it's a classic piece of canoe history, and especially here in Canada, but would I carry this? Well, turns out, yeah, I actually learned to appreciate just what this kettle is capable of. So before you turn off and, and dismiss this kettle, let me just talk about it a little bit and tell you why it may be something you want to consider. Okay, to begin with, this kettle was invented in the late 1890s by Patrick Kelly in Ireland, and it's a company, a family-owned company, and it's still run by the same Kelly family today. There is a U.S. distributor, which is the people that sent me this, some, as I said, many months ago. The Trekker is the smallest in the line of Kelly kettles. It is uh, only 600 milliliters in the kettle part, the body that holds the water, and there are some much bigger ones, but this is the one I wanted because, well, for the most part, I spend my time walking and hiking, and I wanted something that I could carry in my backpack. And originally, I thought 600 milliliters of water is not an awful lot, but 600 is more than enough for most of the meals that I prepare for myself. So, you know, when I looked at it, and, and I should talk about the original kettles. The original kettles were made of tin. Can you imagine? The original Patrick Kelly bending and folding tin into shape, and then I don't know if he soldered them and just press, press them together, but um, it's not something we would use today. They leaked, they burnt out. So we decided to make them in copper, and that worked really well. But eventually they moved on to aluminum, and today they're available in aluminum and stainless steel. You know, it'd be interesting is to see if at some point in the future they choose to make one of these in titanium. It would have all the strength of the stainless steel, but all the light weight of the aluminum. But it would be costly, I'm sure. Anyway, something to dream about. So, back to the Kelly Kettle. What makes this special and worth considering? Well, I chose this specifically to come out here down on the lakeshore in this late October day with this high wind coming off of the water. And I did that to highlight just what this kettle does best. This is probably best considered a storm kettle. And in fact, I think that's one of the names that they often received as storm kettle. And the reason is, if you can get even the smallest of fire going in that base piece and you put the kettle on top, you will have no problem keeping the fire going because this is pretty much the original rocket stove. And I'll show you the inside design of this in a second. But once you get the, the fire started and you start dropping extra sticks in through the top, I don't think there's any putting this thing out. In fact, the windier it is, the better it is. In fact, when I turned those two air holes into the wind, it became like an inferno inside of the kettle itself. It brought that 600 milliliters of water. No, I didn't time it because I'm out in the woods. I don't really care. But let's put it this way. I wasn't prepared for it to come to, to a boil so quickly. I had put the kettle on the fire. I got my lunch ready, which needed some hot water. And before I even had my lunch in the cup ready for, to add the water, this thing was whistling. And uh, I couldn't believe just how quickly it comes to a boil. The fire will burn out if you let it very quickly because of how fast it works. But if you have a small supply of sticks, and it didn't take very many, I probably, you probably saw what I put in it. It didn't take very many sticks to get this thing going and to bring that water to a boil. Uh, yeah, it is an extremely good. So it worked well for me in the winter. This will work in the rain. How many stoves can you say that? of? Again, if you can get a small fire going in the base of this, drop the kettle on top, the rain's not going to put it out. It's completely shielded. The fire is from the inside, and the air is, is being drawn into those, those uh, feed holes on the side of the, of the base, up through the top of this thing. There's no putting this thing out once it gets going. So, um, yeah, it's great in cold weather. It's great in windy weather. It's great in stormy weather. That's about what I can say for it. Now, you still have to consider, do you want to carry this weight and can you get other uses out of it? Well, there are some accessories that come with the kettle that I want to show you. 
Some of them are, I think, quite useful. Some of them may have limited use, but I'll, I'll qualify that when I show them to you. So I have to reposition the kettle and uh, show you those accessories that come with this to give it more of a multi-use. Okay, we, before I show you the accessories that go with the stove and give you an idea how it works, uh, let's just go over a few of the statistics. Now, again, this is the smallest of the four models that Kelly Kettle has right now, and it's in stainless steel. So you can look on their website, and of course I am going to provide the links to their website in the show notes below, where you can check out the other models, the weights and the sizes and all that type of thing. But to begin with, this, as you see it right now, which is the base version, meaning it's just the, the fire box on the bottom and then the kettle on top. That comes in at 11 and 5 16th in height to the very top. And uh, I'm, and again I'm going to put all the statistics and the, and the sizes and everything in the show notes below. The diameter which I measured across the base of the box itself or the uh, firebox comes in at 5 and 1 half inches. The weight of just these two pieces alone comes in at one pound, nine ounces. So not overly heavy when you consider this is both your stove and your kettle. But when you start adding other accessories to it, then of course the weight is going to come up. Now this is the bag that the kettle came in. So it's a nice little nylon drawstring uh, sack that holds everything nicely and not too tight. Lots of room in there. I put a few accessories in there and on top of it as well. But we're going to put that aside because that's not part of what we want to see. And again, now, before I show you those uh, accessories that come with this that maximize the versatility, there's a few things I want to mention about the kettle. You did see how I started the fire in the base of the uh, box here and then add it wood after I put the kettle on add it wood in through the top What you have to realize is once the air starts flowing in through those holes and up through that chimney the heat is just tremendous It's very easy to burn yourself if you get too close because the flames will actually extend quite a ways above the top of that Now the importance of knowing that is taking the kettle on and off of the base you know, if you're not aware of this, you could very easily just want to grab this handle and lift that off. I guarantee if you do that, you will be looking at first degree burns. There's no question in my mind. They, at least second degree, you'll blister. You will be sorry. You'll probably drop the kettle and water will be going everywhere. So don't do that. The proper way to take the kettle on and off of the stove is to grab it by the sides and with your hands to the side, lift it on and off like that. And the uh, uh, same thing, the plug in this, and I'm going to talk about the plug in a second because I think that's very important to understand. If you take, once you take that off, then it's safe for you to remove the plug using the chain and pop, and then you, your plug comes off. The chain that's attached to the plug is also attached to the base of the kettle. Now, once it's off the fire, you can hold it with your hand above the chimney. It's not going to burn you then because there's no fire coming up through. But you can see how the chain is attached to the base of the kettle. And what that's used for is pouring. That's how the, the kettle, oh, a little bit of water left in it. That's how you pour the kettle. Now, here's just a word on the plug. Um, the plug is really valuable. As you saw, I went down to the edge of the lake. I filled the kettle up with lake water. I popped the plug in, and that way I could carry this if I had to go any distance with a whole, without a whole lot of concern of uh, water spilling out or losing my water. Up until now, the advice was always, always remove the plug when you have the kettle on the stove because the original plugs could build up an intense amount of pressure inside the kettle itself and either have the kettle or the plug pop out and hot water and steam shoot out and if you're nearby get scalded very badly or I suppose if it's plugged up you know hard enough you could get a catastrophic failure and explosion of the kettle itself. Well Kelly Kettle has finally been able to develop and release a whistling plug and you probably heard that when my water came to a boil it's really quite a nice thing to have. It means that you can be about your other chores nearby because you never leave a fire unattended but you can be about your other chores and uh, when the water's ready then you're going to know it because of the whistle in fact that's what happened to me this time i was trying to get my lunch prepared and it started whistling and i said wow that thing is ready and i wasn't ready for it so the plug just sits in now there is an arrow right here on the plug that indicates put it in in this direction and the reason for that is there's vents underneath here which you'll probably saw a little bit of the spitting of water when it did come to a boil so those are just a couple of safety features. I also wanted to show you, of course, the design. 
it doesn't look like there's much kettle in this, but there's a double wall design, and you can see how the chimney goes right through. And so the water is held in a, inside the wall between the chimney and the outside, and that's why there's not a great volume of water in this for its given size. But it's also why all that surface area is in contact with all that heat. And there's a tremendous, as I said, a tremendous amount of heat coming out of the top of this. All that surface area, all that heat means rapid boil. So it's a very effective for doing that. Okay, let me just quickly show you a couple of the accessories that came with the Kelly Kettle, or you can purchase with the Kelly Kettle. And uh, we'll get going. Okay, so, ah, sorry about that. Probably the first accessory that makes sense to have is this. This is a pot stand, grill, whatever you might want to call it, that sits on top of the base and now you have a little hobo stove, and that's in fact what they refer to this is as is a hobo stove. So you could take the kettle off, put a fry pan on, continue to feed some, feed some wood inside, and fry your eggs, your bacon, your spam, whatever else you want to fry in there. Or if you have another pot with something else in it that you want to you know, uh, cook with, then you can do that as well. Okay, now just a few words on the hobo stove. I have been playing with the hobo stove trying to get it to work really well. I'll tell you, it is no barn burner. This thing will not bring a pot of water to a boil rapidly. Uh, it's just not a well-designed stove by itself. However, having said that, it still works. It still works quite, fast, quite well. It's just not fast. So there is a nice port there for feeding your wood in and uh, you can continue to get a good uh, fire going in the base and a lot of coals so you can cook it's just not going to cook really rapidly probably that is a good thing because if you're using it for frying or uh, you know roasting or something on then maybe you don't want all the heat that you would in some of the faster stoves in fact it probably is a good thing for that reason now having said that there's a few things i may consider doing with this to see without actually changing the, the base itself see if there's some additions I can get a little bit more out of. So what I'll do is I'll do some testing of this hobo stove by itself without the kettle uh, just to see what I can get out of that and I'll probably make a separate video on that. So that's probably the number one accessory you want to have with it. And I have a little bag with the accessories here. Quite a wind on my back right now coming off the lake. Hopefully it's not creating too much noise in the in the camera. So when this is on top of the base and all the flame is coming up through, is there a way to harness all that heat? Maybe add a second pot to it? Well, this is their traditional additional pot stand that drops down inside and you can put another small pot on top of this. I would not re recommend using a fry pan. I've tried a few things and to see what fits and you know if you have a large pot it'll fit. If you have a small pot you'll notice that there are notches for different sized pots that you can put on top of this. Primarily those notches are for a little pot. Uh, I guess you can call it a pot that comes with the Kelly Kettle as an accessory. This one stand is designed to work with all sizes of Kelly Kettle. That's why it's notched for some different sizes. So that's not a bad accessory to have. I did see that they added another accessory to their line that kind of took the plate, replaced that. And I asked them if they would send it to me because I saw some real benefits. So this is the updated version of the pot stand that you can sit on top works just like the other one did and again is designed for putting other the other smaller pots on top of but what's really cool about this is this can also act as a base now hopefully I'll be able to put this somewhere you can see it and it's designed ideally for putting that on top the the base the fire pot on top of it and what's good about that is because I, I found this out during my testing during the winter is that because there's no legs on the bottom of this stove it's really subject to the cold coming up through the base of it so i had troubles during the winter on the frozen earth to get it to um, you know get a good fire going because of the cold was robbing a lot of the heat out so this would help cake it off of the the cold frozen earth and allow it to uh, 
to work more effectively. It also would work well on uneven surfaces, like maybe in the sand. It would also work well to use it on top of combustible surfaces. So make it a little safer. I mean, I'm out here on the rocks right now next to the lake, so there's no worry of for fire here. But if I was working in the woods and I wanted to use this on the soft earth where there might be a lot of duff, that stand would lift the stove off and insulate the, the earth away from it. So that's, I think, a nice dual use stand that I'll probably be using more in the future. Put that aside. So the other accessories that I have, make sure you can see these. This is a little pot kit that they sent me. And uh, it's small, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you that right now. It, it is quite small. So this little pot, and there's one more accessory to use it. comes with a little pot grabber and you can pick the pot up and uh, you could either put it on top of the hobo stove like that or you could put it on top of the Kelly kettle like this and you could heat small amounts up. And you can probably tell that I'm not overly enthused with it and it's mostly because of its size. Now it is designed the size is designed to fit with the Trekker. So the Trekker model, being the smallest, is going to end up with the smallest of the pot sets. But if you have the larger kettles then, and want to get this, then you've got something of use. You can see I did use it, have tried it quite a bit. Uh, it does work, it just doesn't hold very much. That's my only complaint. What it does hold nicely and keeps clean is a nice little coffee cup that Kelly Kettle has as an accessory. So silicone handles, fold-out handles, uh, beautiful lip guard, measurements imprinted down the side, two in a set. The other one I couldn't bring because it doesn't fit inside of this kettle. But if you have, again, one of the larger kettles, the two coffee cups will fit inside of each other, inside of this, inside of this. And well, let me just show you. I'll put it all away and you'll see how it all packs in together. Not bad. So all of that can now go in that green bag and didn't take up any more space than just the base in the kettle itself. So if those accessories do add to it. Oh, there's one more accessory. And that is a small grill. So a small folding grill. Uh, you know, again, for this size base, it's not a lot of surface area, but it's not bad. It does sit inside. So if you've got some nice coals in the base and you want to grill a little piece of meat up or something small like that, then yeah, this will work. And it's not a bad accessory. It folds up nicely, goes with the rest of the kit, doesn't take up any additional room. It has maybe an ounce or two of extra weight to it, but it's an option to consider. Okay, I've shown you the, how the kettle works and how everything goes together. Let's uh, close this video up with a few thoughts. The Kelly Kettle, a true classic. Longtime favorite of canoeists or people who work in the beach or open fields. You can't beat this for working in stormy weather, either in the wind, the rain, or the cold. It may be a bit bulky and may be a bit heavy compared to some of the other systems you can get out there. But you'll not find a faster stove, you'll not find a more efficient stove, especially in inclement weather. Anyway, it is something to consider. I don't use this all the time, but if I know I'm going to come out in the rain or the, w or the wind and all I really want is a lot of hot water, this is the thing right here. This is the one I'll reach for first. Again, I want to thank Kelly Kettle, uh, the people to, that sent this to me for their patience and for sending this to me because uh, I've wanted a long time to try one of these and now I'm happy I have it. I again, I'll put the links in the show notes below. I'm gonna to continue to play with this. I'm gonna probably make another coffee with it now before I head out. But until I see you again, get out and explore and take that path less travel. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.